In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to use Magic Cursor for After Effects. Run After Effects. Open your project or create a new one. In this example, we'll start from scratch. You can import a simple interface image without layered elements or an interface with each element on a layer. Recommended! In this example, we'll start with the latest scenario. You can create your interface in Adobe Illustrator subdividing each element in a layer. Then import your Illustrator file in After Effects as a composition retaining the layer size. Run the script. If you try to press any button, you can notice that nothing happens. This is because, first of all, you need to import the cursor asset. So, select the composition where you want to create your animation and press the Import Cursor button. When the cursor appears, press the Refresh button to refresh the script window. Select all your layers into your main composition and press the Grab Selected Elements button to import the elements in the list. If you want to place the cursor over the element called Button 4, you just need to double-click on the Button 4 item on the list. In order to keep the cursor on this element for 2 seconds, you have to move the time indicator by 2 seconds and press the Stop button. Now, let's assume you want to move the cursor to a different element and stop there for 1 second. As you did before, you have to move the time indicator and double-click on the new element. Then move the time indicator by one second and press the Stop button, and so on. As you can see, when you click on an element or on the Stop button, a new marker appears in the mouse cursor layer. This is a very useful feature because if you want to retime your cursor animation, you just need to move the markers without going crazy adjusting or moving keyframes. Furthermore, to remove any cursor movement, place your real mouse cursor on the corresponding marker, hold the control key down and click on it. To remove all markers, just place the cursor on a marker, right-click and choose Delete All Markers. OK, you've just imported all elements into the list, so the cursor can point to all these elements. But what if you need to move the cursor out of the screen or place it in a different position? In this case, you have to record these positions by clicking on the Create Position Finder button. The script will create a sort of finder that you can use and move to set the new cursor positions. So, for example, if you are planning to move the cursor out of the screen on the right side, you have to place the finder in that position and press the Set button. The script will ask you to type a name for this position. You could call it Out of Screen Right, but obviously you're free to choose the label you prefer. This new position has been added on the items list. Repeat this operation to add as many new positions as you want. Now you can remove the position pointer layer. If necessary, you can create it again to add further cursor positions.
If you close the script window and open it again, the items list will be empty and all stored positions will be lost. This would be tricky, because if you had created many cursor positions manually, you would now have to set all again from scratch. For this reason, the script includes the possibility to save the current list. Press the Save icon button, give a name to the file, and save it. Now, let's try to close the script, open it again, and press the Load icon button. Select the saved file and all items will be correctly loaded in the list. If you want to remove an item from the list, select it and press the C key button. To remove all items, press the Trash icon button. The Cursor tab includes the most used cursors, subdivided in two main styles light or dark. You can switch the current cursor to another one unlimited times. Just move the time indicator to the correct time position and double click on the new cursor, as shown in this example. If you change your mind and decide to overwrite the last two cursors with the vertical resize cursor, place the time indicator right before the second last cursor, tick the Overwrite Subsequent checkbox, and double click on the vertical resize cursor. Likewise, to reset all cursor changes, move the time indicator to the beginning, keep the Overwrite Subsequent checkbox ticked, and double-click on the cursor that you want to use. We've just seen how to add or overwrite the cursors, but what if you need to replace a current cursor with another one? In this example, the animation starts with the pointer 1. After 2 seconds, it switches to arrow 1, and at 4 seconds, it switches again to drag 1. Now let's assume you want to replace the second cursor statement, arrow 1 to busy 1. Place the time indicator where the arrow 1 is active. In the drop-down list, change the action from add to replace, and double-click on the busy 1 cursor. There's not just black and white cursors. With magic cursor, you can also assign a different color to each cursor. To do that, Make sure you have set the Light Cursor Style List. Select the cursor you'd like to change, press the Fill Color button, and modify its color. Do the same with the Stroke Color button to change the cursor outline color. The script includes a wide range of cursors, but you're free to use up to three custom cursors. Just expand the imported folder called magic underscore cursor and open the custom one composition. In this composition, create or import your custom cursor. Now, insert it by double clicking on the cursor called custom one in the script cursors list. The third tab is Actions. Here, you can add a click effect on the cursor. Just place the time indicator in the right position and press one of the available click styles. You can also replace the click colors by clicking on the corresponding color button. To remove a click, place the time indicator over the click effect and press the Remove Action button. Press Remove All to remove all cursor actions. Magic Cursor also includes three cursor effects, Highlight, Magnify, and Spotlight. When using the Highlight, you can also set the highlight color. 
Now set the effect Start and End Time. As usual, if you want to remove the effect, place the time indicator to where the effect is active and press the Remove Current Effect button. The fourth and last tab is Effects. Here you can add some effects to your interface elements. Let me show you how it works with a short example. I want to start my animation moving the pointer 6 cursor from the upside of the screen to the button 1. When the pointer reaches the button, I want it to switch to Link Select 2. Then I'm going to add a red click, and I want to highlight the button with a yellow button animated outline, and even with a button fill with the fade out effect. Please follow all steps. Easy, right? But that's not all. Sometimes it is necessary to add some info or help tips. Just press the Add Help tip. The script will create a boxed text with a default duration of 5 seconds that you can increase or decrease by trimming the layer. To resize the text, do not use the layer scale property but the font size. Change the text, the font, and the color. Go to the Effects Controls panel of the text layer. Some effects have been applied, but you can only use the first two. In the Help Tip Color effect, adjust the opacity of the text, the box color and the box opacity, while in the Help Tip Position, set the Help Tip Position. As you can see, the Help Tip follows the cursor but you can easily convert your help tip into a subtitle by pressing the link slash unlink button and then move and place it where you like. If you want, you can relink the text simply by clicking the same button again. The next effect is the screen zoom. Click the button and a new layer will be added to your composition. The screen zoom effect starts with a smooth zoom in the animation, in correspondence of the layer starting point, and returns to the normal scale at the layer ending point. So, even in this case, you can adjust the duration of the effect simply by trimming the screen zoom layer. The amount of zoom can be set by changing the zoom value.
And finally, there is the drag and drop effect. In this example, I have a simple interface where I want to drag and drop a button into an empty box. What I need to do is to move the cursor on the button, and I also switch my cursor to drag, even if this is not strictly necessary. I select the button layer and press the drag button. I move the cursor to the empty box, then press the drop button. Until now, we have been working on a layered interface, but you could also work on a single interface image. In this case, you can't grab the elements, and you must assign the cursor positions manually. Furthermore, in this scenario, all functionalities of the Effects tab cannot be used. Thanks for watching, and enjoy Magic Cursor!